This factory in Abilene, Kansas, is one of five Russell Stover factories throughout the nation. But it looks more like a bunch of small kitchens, each mixing its own special sweet batch. So we're making the molasses chew. This is the hot batch. So we're taking we're putting vanilla flavoring in, turn on the stirrer. This is where the chewy center is made for the molasses chew. It's a double batch. Over here, a Vermont nut cream and chocolate truffle. We sell more truffles in the U.S. than anybody else, and the reason is, is because of the cream. Tom Ward, his brother Scott, and sister Linda now own Russell Stover. Their father, Lou Ward, bought the company in 1960. The kids literally grew up kids in a candy factory. We used to go uh, on a Saturday afternoon and go try out just about every piece in the shop or in the factory. It was a lot of fun. Basically, we haven't changed it since uh, the way Clara was making it at home. Like the copper pots used to cook in flavor. They're the same type of pots Clara used. Clara and Russell Stover started cooking candy in 1923 from their bungalow home in Denver, Colorado. At the time, the company was called Mrs. Stover's Bungalow Candies. The candies were so well liked, there were five bungalow stores in their first year of business. They were extravagant. The windows were famous. And to this day, we've used those tools that she created. As demand grew, so did the staff. But the recipes never changed, and hand dipping the candies remained. Bungalow trucks were nothing less than attention grabbing. And it wasn't long before chocolate lovers everywhere recognized the quality candy inside that box with a distinctive bow. But in the 1940s, along with the war, came sugar rationing, nearly devastating to a candy maker. And they were, they were very low on supply. So basically, when they had made up enough candy, they would then open the doors, and by the end of the day, usually, they'd be totally emptied out. And then they'd close the store and wait until they'd make enough product. After turning customers away, Russell Stover sat in his office wondering if the business would survive. By 1953, the toughest times were over. Russell Stover Candy celebrated its 30th anniversary. And the Stovers were finally allowed to concentrate on making only the finest candy. Today's factory looks very much like it did back then. Assortment lines have grown. Boxing is more efficient, and the finished product sometimes moves itself down the line. But back in the kitchen, candy makers still handcraft each piece per Clara and Russell's original recipe. We're inspecting the cherries. To make a cherry cordial, giant copper vats spin the sugar coating, which will eventually turn into liquid around the cherry. Then each piece is hand dipped. Thick swirls of chocolate on top, then dippers tap the next spot on the tray to add a second layer of chocolate on the bottom to prevent cherry juice from leaking out. They do this more than 25 million times a year, the largest maker of hand-dipped candies in the U.S. To make that layered taste inside a peanut butter crunch, in a few minutes you'll start seeing the peanut butter come through, it takes two candy makers and some muscle. A lot of what we do uh, could potentially be automated, but really everything that we do is, is driven by the freshness of the product because if you don't have fresh product, you can call it candy, but it's not really what people want to eat. For butter almond toffee crunch, the Ward brothers had to design special equipment. Because it fits the way we make candy. These valves cool or heat a cast iron tray, which in this case cools the toffee after it's cooked. Temperatures are not only vital in cooking the candy. Here, pecan delights get a chocolate shower in a small room warm to 80 degrees. And cream centers are very sensitive to heat. Clara used turkey pans to let her creams cool in small batches. After trying more modern methods, the wards realized Clara was right. In large quantities, the heat doesn't escape as quickly, and the creams keep cooking, which changes the taste and texture. So Clara's turkey pan method is still used to cool creams. It is a large scale kitchen, but it is still done in old Hobart mixers that are now built to larger scale. Although Clara and Russell probably didn't use a forklift to transport their famous heart-shaped boxes, 
The one pound assorted still looks a lot like the first one made, and cherry cordials will continue to say hand dipped. The Stovers would be happy with the way that we just kept on going the exact same way that they originally set out, which was just make great candy, candy will sell itself.